Hi, I'm Mark Wagner, President of the Educational Technology and Life Corporation in Irvine, California. I'd like to welcome you to Wiki While You Work, an introduction to wikis in education. I'm thrilled to be presenting again for the uh, K-12 online conference, and I'm glad you've joined me. Now, on with the show. What's on the agenda today? First, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the ReadWrite Web, what that is and what it means for you and your students. Now, if you saw my presentation a couple of days ago on blog if you love learning, don't worry. Uh, it's fresh new stuff, but uh, we got to go over the basics for the others, and believe me, the review won't hurt. Then I'm going to talk to you about uh, wikis in particular and how you can use that tool in your classroom and with your students. Got plenty of uh, examples of educational uses of wikis uh, and of course uh, we'll have some how-to there. We even got some uh, real interviews this time uh, both with my wife Eva uh, and with my colleague Dave Conley who's just doing some amazing stuff with wikis. First though if you want to see how easy a wiki is for a first-time user head right on over to wikiwhileyouwork.wikispaces.com it's uh, kinda long but You'll remember it, wikiwhileyouwork.wikispaces.com. There's no www or anything necessary there. Head on over there, and if you've been in any of my workshops before, these questions may look familiar, but there's uh, three uh, opening questions to get you thinking. Uh, I want you to answer the question, what is the read-write web? Go ahead and click edit this page up at the top of the page. Put your answer in right below the question. There may be others' answers there. The second question is, what is a wiki? I want to activate your prior knowledge here. What do you guys know about wikis? Go ahead and put in your answers. This is asynchronous, so with any luck, uh, you folks won't be editing it at the same time, and we'll see everybody's answers grow as the conference goes on. Uh, the third question then is, what do these things mean for you and your students? The Read Right Web and wikis, that is. Uh, there's a fourth bonus question, but you're going to have to actually visit the wiki to see what that is. So head on over to wikiwhileyouwork.wikispaces.com and uh, go ahead and uh, pause the video at the end of this segment and uh, hit play again when you're done. I'm serious. Hit pause and hit play again when you're done. All right. I'm going to hit pause. All right. We're back. I hope you all visited the wiki and put your answers in under those questions. Now, even if you just reflected on the questions in your mind as you're watching the video, I'm sure you wonder uh, how your answers are measuring up. That isn't unless you read everybody else's answers on the wiki, and you have a pretty good sense about where you stand now. Well, it's one of the good parts of the Read Write Web now, isn't it? Anyway, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, and again, for the others, the review won't hurt, why don't you join me downstairs at the kitchen table to talk about the Read Write Web? Like old media, books and newspapers, for example, the web used to be a one-way operation for educators. We could read the paper, but we weren't adding to it or editing it in any way. And we could read websites, download text, images, audio, video, but we weren't adding to or editing those either. Information was moving one way, from the producer to the consumer, and we had no control over that. We were dependent on publishers to tell us uh, what was relevant, what was interesting, what was news. It was a one-way web. It was the web 1.0. It was the read-only web. But things are changing. Come upstairs. As I was saying, things have changed. You no longer need access to a web server. And you don't need skills like being able to program HTML or use FTP to have a web page any longer. All you need is any old computer with an internet connection. In my case, uh, laptop with a wireless connection here in the house. In fact, I'm working on the wiki I created to support this presentation. I'll write something uh, obvious you can pick out there later. I'm writing this from my bed in my robe as I film the presentation. How do you like that shot? And I'll save it goes right up to my wiki. It's part of the web now. In essence, it's 
just as easy now to create and share online content as it is to consume it. It's a two-way web, the web 2.0, a read-write web. All right, so maybe you're getting the idea that the web is changing and that this might be important for educators and students, but what about wikis? Where do wikis fit into all of this? Well, basically, wikis are a particular tool uh, within the greater set of read-write web tools like blogs and podcasts, RSS feeds, social networking, social bookmarking, and uh, other things you'll hear about during this conference. Uh, but wikis are, in essence, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to quote from Gifted Education Communicator, volume 37, number 2, page 10. Wikis are websites that can be quickly edited by any visitor. The term wiki comes from the Hawaiian word wiki wiki, which means quick or fast. And if you can use a word processor, you can edit a wiki. Most wikis allow a user to simply click an edit button in order to start editing the page just like any other document. Text can be added, changed, or deleted, as can pictures, audio, or even video. One visitor can post a new thought, which can then be improved upon by subsequent visitors. If a wiki is ever abused, used inappropriately, or vandalized, the next visitor can revert back to an earlier version of the page. And don't worry, this comes from one of my trusted sources. This guy. Now, one of the best examples of uh, what a wiki is and how it works is the Wikipedia. The Wikipedia at wikipedia.org is a collaboratively edited online encyclopedia with over a million entries in English and nearly a million users worldwide. It has the capacity to become something like the repository of all human knowledge because people from all walks of life can contribute their expertise. One of the examples I like to use in uh, workshops is uh, the example of the tsunami article. Uh, back in, uh, I guess it was December 2004 when the tsunami hit in Asia, this article just uh, blossomed. And now if you uh, head over there, you can see all kinds of uh, information about tsunamis. You can see images of the uh, tsunami in 2004 and eyewitness accounts. You can see animations of that tsunami and uh, how that affected the area. I hope you guys can see that. And if you scroll down the page, someone's taken the time to create an exhaustive table of contents. What a great uh, resource for your kids here. Causes of tsunamis, characteristics, uh, signs of an approaching tsunami, warnings and prevention historical tsunamis, and if you skim down the page, you can see just how detailed these sections are with uh, visuals, visual aids, lots of links to other sources, lots of great images. Uh, it's debunking common misperceptions here. Look at all this. Tsunami waves, signs of approaching tsunami, warnings and preventions, historical tsunamis, and no kidding, look at this. It's got uh, by year history of uh, significant tsunamis and again kids can uh, click on any of these links here and go to additional related information so phenomenal resource uh, the Wikipedia and uh, of course because it can be edited your kids should they happen to uh, discover something that's not in here can actually come up to edit this page and begin to add resources to the Wikipedia too Notice these uh, tools that are very word processor-like. Uh, we'll be doing more editing of wikis with uh, wikispaces.org in a little bit. But how exciting is that, that your students could actually contribute to uh, the sum of all human knowledge? Now, because anybody can edit the Wikipedia, uh, it can be pretty easily vandalized. I could very easily click edit this page right now and uh, highlight everything and destroy it. Of course, the next person just needs to come into history and revert to the earlier version. In fact, uh, the Wikipedia works because the white hats outnumber the black hats by orders of magnitude. If someone posts inaccurate information or vandalizes a page, it's quickly reverted to a more previous, I'm sorry, a previous, more authoritative version by another visitor. The nature of the Wikipedia makes it a natural place to begin discussions about information literacy, verifiability, and bias in a text. Um, I often ask teachers what the highest form of authoritative information is in academia. Sometimes it's surprisingly hard to tease this out of them, but it's peer-reviewed journals. 
Uh, if an article has been peer reviewed, that's the highest form of authority uh, uh, information can have in academic circles. Uh, and in some ways, Wikipedia is the largest, most peer reviewed uh, publication on the planet. Now, of course, it's not necessarily a, a board of editors, though some of the um, moderators on Wikipedia are uh, unquestionably uh, high order experts in their fields. Uh, but because anybody can edit, there there certainly is the opportunity that you might come across some information that's not entire ac entirely accurate. So having your kids uh, check their sources, uh, having them exercise their information literacy skills is going to be a good thing. One of the other benefits of Wikipedia is the fact that because it's consistently updated, you can find information on uh, more recent topics, like uh, at the time it happened, the tsunami. For instance, right now I could search for podcasting, and find a pretty in-depth article on podcasting. Now, this particular article actually brings up uh, another interesting side of Wikipedia. Uh, there was a couple of folks involved with uh, developing podcasting, among them uh, Adam Curry, who was a former MTV VJ, and Dave Weiner, who's a uh, programmer. And as I understand the story, uh, Adam Curry was actually caught red-handed uh, anonymously, but they tracked his IP address, anonymously editing Wikipedia and removing any um, any sections discussing Dave Weiner's contribution to the development of podcasting. So, moral of the story is, A, students need to be on uh, the lookout for any sort of uh, bias or agenda behind the writing that's happening on Wikipedia. And oftentimes this is flagged. You'll see a, a little uh, yellow tag across the top of the screen that'll say something like, uh, this article is flagged for... Um, incendiary language or biased language and uh, it'll refer you to their policy and how to fix it um, but B you know the uh, Wikipedia caught the editing uh, and caught the perpetrator so uh, there really are people dedicated to uh, making things right on Wikipedia uh, another funny story I like to share is at one point I actually uh, started a new article for the workshop that I was doing and um, said, you know, so many teachers are learning about uh, Read Write Web in this place and this time on this day, uh, and just posted a new article. Um, now, within the hour, we came back to the article, and there was a flag across the top that said, this article flagged for deletion. Reason? Trivial. Oh, hey, I was... Uh going to put this thing away, but this is good stuff. I want to read you a little bit more. Uh, on a smaller scale than the Wikipedia, teachers and students use wiki services such as wikispaces.org, which we're going to look at a little bit later when we do the hands-on bit, uh, to create collaboratively authored class texts. Imagine collecting resources all year long on your class wiki. Everything from grammar exercises to essays and from hyperlinks to video projects can be shared on a wiki, with each student pitching in his or her own contribution. And actually, thanks to the history feature, which I'll show you if each of the students have their own account number, you can uh, log in, you can actually uh, keep track of who's contributing what. Wikis are perfect for student group work and for teachers who are working together or have similar interests. Uh, consider professional learning communities, for instance. Continue that conversation between your face-to-face -face meetings. For instance, if one teacher starts a wiki in order to share online resources related to an adopted textbook, teachers all over the school, even all over the state, can contribute. And the more people who contribute, the greater the resource the wiki becomes. Now, I actually know a teacher who's doing that, and uh, she's got her office right next to mine. Hey, Eva. Hey, Mark. Is now a good time to uh, talk about your uh, wikis? Sure. Cool. Let anyone know. Uh, well, why don't you tell me about your HM Tech Wiki? What's it for? What? Do, how do you use it? Well, I started this uh, HM Tech.wikispaces.com. And what does that stand for first? Uh, Houghton Mifflin Technology. Okay. Houghton Mifflin is our reading series, and it's actually the series that most of the state has adopted. So I figured with everybody using it, or almost everybody, might as well put something up there that other people could add to. All right, so uh, when you put ideas up here, other people uh, can use them, and then if they have ideas, they can share them on here too. Absolutely. So the more people using it, the better, right? Definitely, definitely. 
So we have it um, organized by grade level. Right now it's kinder through fourth, which with with most of it being kindergarten, since that's what I teach. Fair enough. And then it's just organized by themes. So we're on theme two right now. It's called Colors All Around, and we're on week two. So I can just click right on week two, and it takes me to phonemic awareness and different websites that I found that will help us learn our letters and our sounds. So all these links here are related to theme two, week two, and Houghton Mifflin? Exactly. Oh, yeah. that's great. And then there's presentations I've made um, that you can download, posters that I've found that you can download. So the idea is that there's so much out there, but it's all in different places. So this was a nice place for me just to put it all up there, go to it when I need it. All right, so that's uh, hmtech.wikispaces.com if any of you out there want to contribute to uh, Eva's wiki or see some of the resources that she's collected. And it also has um, different types of independent online games that kids can play Oh yeah. that you might have seen on a blog. So games are uh, good for kids, huh? Definitely. All right, so this, this grew into something else, though. What was that? Well... I started using it and it just was so easy because every year it's there, already done, that I decided uh, I wanted something like this for other subjects too. So we started one called Tech Tips and the tip stands for Technology Integration Projects. And it's a collection of projects that might last you a whole week or projects that you can do in one hour in the lab. There's online games, presentations for the whole class, and it's also organized by, um, by the curriculum, but kind of by months, because in our district we're on pacing plans. Oh yeah, okay. So the whole district is supposed to be on the same theme, on the same chapter in math, so with that premise, there should be plenty of resources to pull from that we could all use at the same time. So. For September, you'll see there's chapter one, and for math and theme one, for language arts, the census for science, and so forth. So any teacher in the district, well, K3 <coughs> in this case, can come edit this page and add uh, resources. Uh, plus, anybody could come here and just take advantage of all the work you've done and, and the others uh, in your class did. Definitely. And the idea, too, is that, you know, even though this is a kindergarten page, a first grade teacher might decide that you know, their first grade students weren't quite ready for oh, the yeah. time or the graphing. And so that they can go back to kindergarten um, type sites and help support their students that way. That's awesome. So it's a way for teachers to share resources even across grade levels and around the district. Yep. And it's as easy as edit this page, isn't it? Yep. Very easy. Anything else you want to say about uh, how you're using uh, wikis in education? Um, just a note, if you do want to add to it, it's a lot easier in Firefox. Oh, that's true, if you're on OS 10. Yes. Yeah. Safari, you have to do a little code breaking, so Firefox is definitely the way to go. All right, so I only have one last question. Okay. Think I can get a kiss on camera? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't look. Now, Eva's not the only teacher I know that uses wikis in creative ways, and I want you guys to hear from somebody who uses them with their students. Also, I want you guys to hear from somebody who's a secondary teacher, like I was. And don't want to leave you guys out in the cold there. So we're actually going to take a drive uh, across Irvine and talk to my colleague Dave Conway. He uses wikis with his uh, high school English students in some really amazing ways, and it's absolutely changed his teaching. So uh, I'm off. I've got my wardrobe, and I'll see you guys over there. I wonder who that could be. What would you like to see? Uh, well, why don't you show me the uh, aerosol experiment and uh, <clears throat> tell us all about it. Okay. Um, the Aristotle experiment is something that I came up with a couple of years ago um, when I really wanted my students to experience education more, to become lifelong learners rather than um, just um, passive uh, students, you know, taking in information rather than doing something. I wanted sure. them to be active. And, uh, well, I came across the wiki, and that's pretty much radicalized my teaching. 
Really? Yeah. Well, okay. What used to frustrate me with education was students would write an essay, for example, or put together a PowerPoint, and um, it would last for all the amount of time that it took me to grade it and give it back to them. Then it would go into the trash can or maybe into their portfolio, but whoever opens that. Right. The Aristotle experiment, um, well, once I got, once I found out about wikis, it changed the way that I could actually have the students do projects. Rather than just being um, from the student to the teacher and then back to the student, I was able to open up their work to a worldwide audience using the internet. So, uh, as we say, it's an authentic audience. Yes, it's an authentic audience. Uh, and I know, of course, you give them an authentic purpose for all the writing they do on the Aristotle experiment, which is, uh, what's the address? Aristotle-experiment.wikispaces.com if you want to check that out. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the wiki that you teach all your classes with. Um, pretty much, yes. Um, I, do other, I do use other web tools such as um, Blogger for um, doing journals or for having the students respond to literature online. Sure. Um, if I want the students to do work um, where they create something and I just want other students to give feedback on it, I'll use a blog. But wikis, you can do pretty much anything that you want to do from, hi Django, <laughs> from putting videos online to um, doing something a little bit more open than a blog mm -hmm. where anybody can respond or anybody can edit. And collaborate. And collaborate, exactly. And as you were pointing out, talking about authentic audiences, my students get feedback from students all over the world. Not That's just awesome. in the discussion section, but also um, students who will actually edit their work. Teachers will leave comments. Um, it's, it's the learning experience at its most open. That's great. So why don't you tell me about some of these parts here? Like, uh, this looks kind of boring, though, but the grammar and vocabulary. Why don't we start there? Actually, um, let's go to grammar, or to vocabulary first. Incidentally, it's nice of you to not only set out a, a camera for me, but to set out some water. That was nice. Huh? Well, you know, I figured somebody might come call me later tonight. It's always good to record, just in case. Um, first of all, vocabulary and grammar, like you pointed out, are usually boring, static activities. Sure. It um, takes 10, 15 minutes during class to set up, give the handouts to go over the concept and then have the students begin the handout, at which point they take it home because you don't have enough time to finish it up in class. Sure. And they copy from their friend or they fill in the blanks and it's done. Um, rather than doing it that way, I've actually come up with a system for doing vocabulary that the students like a little bit more. Um, they actually do vocabulary in a research kind of mode rather than just as, once again, a passive um, taker in of information. Right. I noticed you said it's done as soon as they fill in their spreadsheet or the uh, blanks too. It's not you read it or anybody right. else reads it. Right. It's done. It's just they done. They turn it yeah. in and they're free to forget about it for the rest of the week. Fair enough. So how's it work with a wiki? Well, with the wiki, I actually have them build their own websites, which um, they use to teach other students the vocabulary lesson. And the trick is, at the same time, they themselves are learning the vocabulary. Right. Sounds like two-way teaching to me. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, for example, this one's a good one, um, our poetic devices list. Now, you can look at poetic devices within poetry, and you can go over a poem that a student you know, may or may not care about. Um, you can talk about the imagery and everything else, but unless they're actually getting into the poems, unless they're getting into the poetic devices themselves, they have a hard time remembering you know, a metaphor from a simile, Sure. Or, you know. They've got to something. use it. Exactly. They have to use it. And so what I had them do, and keep in mind I want everything inquiry-based or research-based, mm -hmm. is I had them select a topic, a poetic device. And by research-based there, you don't mean it's uh, proven by scholarly research. You mean they're doing research. They're doing right. research. Okay. Yes. They have to look it up. They have to find it. Um, and for more complex projects, I actually have them use a variety of resources. Mm -hmm. But for something simple like finding the definition of metaphor, they can go online. Um, they okay, so this is cool. They've got the definition, mm -hmm. they've got an example poem, and an MP3 file? Yes. Actually, this is something that I try to blend into every project. Um, I want it multimedia. And text is good. Pictures make it better. Mm -hmm. But if I have the students doing something like working with video or with audio, 
it just raises it to the next level. And I think it makes it a bit more authentic because once they get involved in the video or the audio, it's no longer just them taking information and setting it somewhere else or putting it in a new place, but they're actually interacting with it just a little bit more. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, giving a presentation at a conference, but uh, by video instead of standing in front of people. Right, exactly. And so this um, gives it just that little personal touch, which right. makes education, I think, a bit more fun. And so, for example, what I had them do was record the poem that they used as their example. And then they're also supposed to, or they were also supposed to um, include a little bit of analysis in their um, audio file. Oh, so this is uh, kids reading the poem. Yes. And well, we'll have to dub it over later or send people to the website. Yes. Unfortunately, the speaker's not the best on this. However, this is pretty much the coolest tablet PC I've ever seen. <laughs> well, that does uh, wreaks havoc with the lighting, doesn't it? It does. But All right. as you can see, it's roughly the size of a paperback. Uh, that's great. Which, um, along with the wikis, frees me up from having to be the center of attention, at least in the classroom. Behind the desk. Okay. Yes, because I gave my desktop computer completely to the students. I never use it. In fact, the less of me <laughs> in front of the class, probably the better. But so why don't you show me some of the web projects too, those are cool. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the web projects. Now, like I said, um, what I'm trying to do is actually go beyond writing, okay? And yes, I know many of the standards for the English language arts are about writing. But actually, to tell you the truth, they go a little bit beyond just writing. Because there's <laughs> listening and speaking. That's just awesome. Birds are going crazy. Yeah, all right. There's listening and speaking, and involved, I think, in pretty much every standard, um, there's the idea that the students should be doing more than just reading and writing. They should also be sure. well, thinking about it, talking about it, and trying to interact with it in a more critical, more fundamental level. Um, once again, wikis are great for getting the students to go beyond simply the reading and the writing aspect. So what do they do with this wiki? Okay. Well, what I set out, set out to do was to take the idea of the essay and kind of explode it. Um, take its component parts, the ideas that um, people normally have about writing, you know, your introduction, your thesis, your body paragraphs, and your conclusion, and put it into a more versatile, um, more interesting product. Um, so I okay, came so up the, with the kids are uh, actually uh, constructing a product online here. Yeah, and that was my main idea. Rather than, once again, something which was static to me, mm -hmm. um, back to them, and then in the That's file it. folder. So what's this uh, Moby Dick Theater? For instance? Okay. Moby Dick Theater is actually a project that my juniors are currently working on. Um, over the summer, um, at our school district, we have students read over the summer. Sure. Um, the text that my juniors were reading over the summer was Moby Dick. Now, we spent the first few weeks um, doing literary analysis prepping them for this project. And what they're to do is that to actually take the text of Moby Dick, chop it up into just the tiniest pieces that they need to prove a point that they're researching and um, present it in video form. In other words, uh. it's kind of a reader's theater version of Moby Dick, um, but with a purpose, with a point. And so what now, I- I'm thinking of back to when I was an English teacher, trying to get kids to remember quotes they could use mm -hmm. in essays. Uh, particularly uh, on a test or an AP test or something like mm -hmm. that was a key thing. So I'll bet after they've done something like this, it's easier for them to remember that. Definitely. And it's a lot more fun. Um, I mean, have you ever read Moby Dick? Yeah. Yeah. You remember. You, um, need, you need teenagers to liven it up a little bit? Exactly. Right. And anytime you get to take a, you know, a 600-page book and turn it into a 5-10 to 10 minute video, the hilarity ensues. So um, that's exactly what they had to do. <clears throat> take Moby Dick, they were given a topic. Oh, so you've posted topics, a task, mm -hmm. the process, all that here. Exactly. I okay. give them not only the topics, but I give them some focus questions that help them think about the book. And okay. I do this with every project. And they can't edit this. Um, no, they can't edit this part. Um, but for every project, I give a um, setup page where I give them the focus questions, I give them the topics, I give them the due dates, and the that's process. protected. And that's protected. 
and then I also give the students a project page where they can work either by themselves or in their groups to create. Well, and here they can edit. Yeah. And here they can create their project. And I also include samples from previous years, which is what we have here. So this looks like an essay on Moby Dick and industrialism, is that what that yes. is? Yes. Right. And the trick is, okay, the text is all here. Now, they still have to do the reading, they still have to do the writing, but um, the cool thing is, as they're creating the video, as they're prepping for the video, they're doing all of the prep work that they would normally do for the essay. They go through their multiple drafts. Mm -hmm. They, uh, For this, they actually had to stage the video before they created it. And oh. um, what they finally come up with is basically an essay. But now they you, have fun doing it. You mentioned multiple drafts. Is mm -hmm. the history function on here as cool as I think it would be for multiple drafts? History function is great because if you view the changes going back to the very beginning, um, all the way through um, the final product, you can actually see the student's text as it grows and develops. Everything from the text that they've inserted to the text that they've deleted. And so wow. I've got a great visual history. Actually, any visitor has a great visual history as far as what they did to create this, uh, what they were thinking during the entire process. So it must cut down on plagiarism when they can't just suddenly cut and paste something in. You'd see it in yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And then I noticed most of your kids are logging in uh, anonymously as guests, but if they all had their own accounts, you could see who was contributing what, right? Yes, and I've actually used both before. I've had the students create individual accounts, um, and what I'm actually currently using is a class account where oh, okay. they sign up using, or they log in using a um, password or a, a username and then a password. And for right now, I'm using um, the houses from the Harry Potter models. Nice. So my third period, for example, would sign up uh, under Ravenclaw, and they have their password, which I can't tell you. And um, then they edit from there. Nice. So you've said some pretty uh, extraordinary things uh, in other sessions I've seen you presenting about how this has changed your teaching. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Sure. Um, possibly the biggest change has been giving control over to the students. Um, all that I really have, all that I'm really doing at this point is setting up a framework for them to work within, and then let them go from there. Um, for example, teaching literature from the literature book. I think many teachers choose not to do it because it's rather time consuming mm -hmm. to lesson plan for each individual piece of text that you're reading in the literature book and to make each piece interesting and new and exciting to do something different with it. Pull in art you know, from the period to compare with the work or to bring in a historical tidbit you know, to make it interesting. That's a lot of work. Yeah, so it's, it's not like they can wear a different shirt in every period to keep people's attention. Exactly. Or, you know, come dressed as um, Abraham Lincoln when they're reading Whitman, you know. Um, but the cool thing is, since I've set up a framework where um, I break the students up into groups, pretty much everything is collaborative except for the individual um, essays that they're writing, um, perhaps in practice for the CSTs or the um, CASI, you know, tests that they have to take at the end of the year. Now, we do a lot of collaborative work. I want every person to have somebody that can um, work with them, that can encourage them, and um, so that's why I do a lot of collaborative work. But getting back to um, how I set up the frameworks, what I do is I give them a topic. Um, as with the web projects, I provide a set of focus questions to help them figure out how to approach the topic, for example. Maybe it's um, a grammar assignment. Maybe it's a short story. Maybe it's a selection of prose um, or a selection of poetry. And um, what they do is, at using the focus questions, using my guidance, because I have them work a couple of days in the lab each week, mm -hmm. um, where I can do some one-on-one -on -one with each of the groups, um, they put together a discussion, not a lecture, but a discussion, where they actually ask the other students questions and lead them through what they found in that poem or in putting together that that grammar page. And all that material is on the Aristotle experiment. Uh, yes, awesome. which works in many different ways. Not only are they leading the discussions, but they're also creating a study guide that will help them as they go 
through the year, they can look back, prepare for the finals, prepare for the tests. If they're looking up something, say we're discussing Hamlet, and they need to look up a tragic hero all the way from the beginning of the year, um, and we're discussing Greek tragedies, they can go back and look that up. And of course, potentially they're helping other students around the world who can exactly. come online and, and, and maybe search for this sort of thing and, and find your site, right? Exactly. Actually, it was kind of funny. The first project that I did with my freshman last year online was the Odyssey project. Okay. And what they did was they created um, online visual story storybooks for the Odyssey. And one group had the last section of the Odyssey in the literature book, which deals with Penelope and Athena. And so they start building their page, they put some pictures up there, they put some text up, and they need to research something else, another focus question. And so they go to Google and they type in Penelope and Athena, and they press enter, and the first site that comes up is their own. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they ran around the library screaming for a little while, oh my god, oh my god, people are going to see this. And then once they calmed down, they figured out, well, first of all, they had better fix all of the spelling and grammar <laughs> errors. Um, but it's actually pretty cool because nothing validates your work more than having somebody else look at it and, and use it. And use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing with me, Dave. Is there anything else you, you want to add before, uh, before I take off again? I got some editing to do tonight. <laughs> um, no, just one thing that wikis will really do for your classroom, uh, I mean, aside from getting the students excited about learning, mm -hmm. because they are actually learning, is I think really free up the classroom. It energizes things. Um, no longer are students passive learners. No longer are you somebody imparting all the information. You get to be a student. You get to be a learner, just as the students are. You get to coach them. You get to interact with them. If they have a question, you might not know the answer, but you get to work with them and find out. It creates a partnership of teaching, I think, more so than anything else. I mean, what could be better? Well, thanks for sharing with me, and thanks for sharing with everybody else. Sounds like you're getting a phone call, so uh, I guess I'll get out of your hair. Okay. <laughs> but thanks. Good seeing you. Crazy tango. It's time to get hands on. Okay, back to the web. Why don't you follow me to wikispaces.com slash site for teachers. Adding all that extra stuff instead of just going to wikispaces.com because wikispaces will give you a completely free and free of advertising site uh, if you are an educator. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. It's going to give you the option to join now. I'm going to make a new bogus account just to walk you through it. Uh, my username is going to be wikiwork. Um, let's see, password, I'll make something up. And email address, I'll use my email address. We do want to make a space, the space name. Uh, I'll call it the same thing, though in this case there's no need for you to call your username and your space name the same thing. Uh, but for my sake, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a public space, although you could potentially uh, make it a private space if you wanted to do that, which is free for educators. And if you wanted to make a wiki that um, other people could view, but only members of the space could edit, you could make it protected. Um, you do need to check here to certify that the space will be used for K-12 education, and then join. Wikispaces is currently trying to give away a hundred thousand free wikis to teachers so you might as well do this okay it noticed that I already had an account using this email address so I'm gonna go ahead and log in under my account but that's the process you guys would use uh, to log in and create a new account here's my existing account notice I've got all sorts of new spaces here uh, or sp sorts of spaces that I've worked on here 
But when you start out, you're going to be creating a new space. And here we are uh, choosing Wikiwork as our new space name. Again, I'm going to make it public. So this is what you'll see when you create a new space. Welcome to your new space. Notice uh, here's the name of your space up in the upper left hand corner, Wikiwork. This is the home page for Wikiwork, which also appears in the navigation on the left. And you have a button for edit this page. Uh, by default, the page has this information, which is telling you how to use it. As soon as you edit this page, uh, that disappears. But I'm going to go ahead and click edit this page. And now you get something that looks like this. And as I said earlier, if you can use a word processor, you can use a wiki. So I'm going to type something in here along the lines of, this is a demo wiki for the wiki while you work presentation at the K-12 online conference. Now, just like a word processor, I can make things bold, underlines, and italics, so I can add a uh, title. Maybe I'll make that bold. Maybe I want to emphasize demo wiki. And maybe I want a link to K-12 online conference. I can simply uh, click the link button here. Allows you to link to other pages within the wiki. Or you can put in an external link like uh, K-12 online conference org. So you can see if you can use a word processor, you can use a wiki, even down to creating bulleted lists. Or numbered lists. Lists of any kind. Just as you would in a word processor, highlight what you want to bullet, use the bullet button, and there you go. A little resizing issue there because I've got such a small screen size right now. I could switch to numbers. <laughs> Same issue. And so on. Now as soon as I have something I'm happy with, I scroll down to the bottom and I'm actually going to click on any of these buttons. Save draft to come back to you later, preview, save, which is what you'll use 90% of the time, or cancel. I'm going to say save. Now check it out, as easy as typing that, making a few things bold and numbering the list, I have a new web page. Anybody that goes to wikiwork.wikispaces.com, at least right now, uh, we'll see this information. So this information could just as easily be a homework assignment or a question for the students. Uh, it could be questions like the ones I left for you on the wiki while you work .wikispaces.com, uh, where you guys were able to come up to edit this page and add your answers below the questions. After you contribute your answers, you can come down and save and that new information will be on the wiki. So editing the page, pretty darn straightforward. These other tabs here are important. Clicking on page, of course, will allow you to view the page. Clicking on discussion allows you to post uh, messages about the page without actually changing the page, particularly if this is a page that a lot of people have a lot of time and energy invested in. Uh, you might post a message here about changes before making changes. Uh, so, for instance, um, should the bulleted list be more meaningful? I think if we're going to have a list on this wiki, we ought to have one that means something to us. Click Post. And sure enough, you can see the first message here. Now anybody can come along and uh, read that message and in fact post a reply. I think meaningless text is just fine for a demo. So now we've got some discussion going on about the page without actually editing the page itself. So here the page content remained the same but we have a lively discussion 
under the discussion tab. There's the posts. Now the history tab is important because the history tab allows you to view previous versions of the page uh, and to revert to them if necessary. So for instance, at 9.32 p.m., I created this version of the page. You guys will remember this with a very nice, neat bull or numbered list. Now, the next version of it, which happens to be the current version in this case, included this uh, inserted, I think bulleted lists are great. Uh, now I've got two number ones. So perhaps I want to revert to the earlier version. I click on history, click the earlier version of it, and click revert to this version. It says please be very sure you'd like to change back, yes. It invites you to leave a comment, so I'm going to say I liked this version better. Your comment might indicate if the site was vandalized or if there was uh, information lost in the edit that shouldn't have been lost. And then go ahead and hit revert. Now here we are on the page and sure enough my initial content is uh, restored someone might be able to go back into the history now and see what I did and in fact see my comment. Uh, if they disagree with me they could of course revert back and we might have something of a revert war uh, and if there's a moderator they might want to control that. Uh, however they might also just come into discussion and say why the revert to the second version. I liked the later version better because dot dot dot. Be great if you can encourage your kids to uh, stand behind their opinions and their uh, reasons for the things they advocate in the discussion. At any rate, that's how that works. You can see that so far I've made all the revisions and I have contributed to the discussion. Uh, if a random person comes along, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Now, if a random person comes along to wikiwork wikispaces.com, because it's a public page, they can still edit it. Notice I'm a guest. And they could come in here and say, Wagner wears funny ties. scroll down, save their work, and if we look in history, we can see that in fact a guest from this IP address, if that's meaningful to you, a guest came along and made the last revision. And we see that now it just announces that uh, I wear funny ties. So the very next visitor can come back to history view the previous version and show changes. Oh, actually we're showing changes to that version. And actually notice it didn't let me revert. I actually have to be signed in to revert. You do have to be uh, accountable to some degree. But you or your kids can sign in after a random guest has uh, caused a problem and actually go into history, view a particular version, and revert to it. Saying undoing vandalism. Now having guests being able to edit your wiki might be beneficial. I've actually heard of teachers whose uh, students uh, had mistakes corrected by other students outside the school or other experts outside the school. So that's uh, one way you can do that. Oh, incidentally, notice I uh, didn't use the site for teachers site when I actually did create WikiWorks, so I've got some ads over here after all. It's not a big deal. They're Google ads, and, and uh, Wikispace is certainly uh, deserves a revenue uh, from any click-throughs. All right, so we've looked at editing the page. We've looked at discussion. We've looked at history. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the Notify Me section, but if we click in there, 
if you are a user of RSS, if you subscribe to blogs through RSS, you can also subscribe to wiki changes through RSS. So you can come down here and subscribe to page, edit, page edits through RSS, and then anytime the page is edited, uh, the changes will come to your RSS reader. You can also subscribe to discussion, so you can follow this lively discussion here in your feed reader as well. Uh, this might be useful if you're keeping track of lots of student wikis um, and you want to subscribe to those and uh, keep track of those inside your reader. Again, sort of an advanced topic, but uh, something that might be useful for you guys. Okay, so we've looked at all the main tabs across here. Edit this page, the page tab which we're viewing right now, discussion, history, and even notify me. It's time to look at some of the other actions we can take in this view. One of those things we can do is create a new page. Now this will be a sub-page to our wiki space. So wiki work is, in this case, the name of our wiki space. And you'll see here wikiwork.wikispaces.com. If we make a new page, say for resources, you'll see it's going to be wikiwork.wikispaces.com slash resources. I'm going to go ahead and create that. Oh, I was running through this earlier, so I had a draft. I'm going to discard the draft. It's a nice thing about Wikispaces. It actually, uh, if you navigate away from this editing page here without saving it, uh, it will actually recover your draft for you. That's a lifesaver. If you're ever editing in a browser and have your browser crash or something like that, you're going to appreciate that, uh, that feature. At any rate, I've created a new resources page. I'm going to type some content here. Resource links will be shared below. And uh, one such resource might actually be my blog, Educational Technology and Life. Oops. Now we want that to be a live link, so I'm going to highlight it, click the link button again up here, and add my address. If you're cutting and pasting into here, be sure not to put a double HTTP. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save this new page. Now we have a resources page at wikiwork.wikispaces.com slash resources. Great. Well, what if someone comes to Wikiwork and they want to get to the resources? Here's the main page. How are they going to get there? We actually need to add that new page to the navigation on the left. To edit navigation, you click on this little edit navigation link. And now we're going to have to create a link, not only to the home page, but to the resources page. Now remember when you click on the link here, I mentioned earlier that you can link to a page within your wiki space. So within the wiki workspace, we're going to link to the home page. We're also going to create a link within the wiki workspace to the resources page. And then we're going to save our navigation. Now we can see it here, but it's better if we go back to the main site. And now you see that the navigation is in the left side. So we created a new page, in this case resources, and then we edited our navigation and added resources to it. So any visitor to Wikiwork can now come into the home page, which we're looking at, or they can click on the resources page and get the links and resources you need for them. Uh, this is a great way to have different sections for um, different users of your wiki. Uh, for instance, Dave Conley's got sections like uh, vocabulary and grammar and web projects. Uh, you could certainly have sections like uh, links or um, essays, stories, whatever it's going to be. Each kid could have their own page. Uh, on your class wiki. There's a lot of different ways you can organize that. If you're an elementary school teacher, it could be, uh, you know, maybe your class wiki will have pages for each subject area, science and math, social studies, English, that sort of thing. A lot of different ways you can uh, create your navigation. In fact, for some teachers who want to do a teacher website or a class website, wiki might be more appropriate than a blog because uh, you can have a very simple navigation with uh, relatively static but editable uh, resources there. All right, my uh, MacBook fan's going crazy, but I got to press on, so sorry about the background noise. Now, uh, I'm going to kind of gloss over recent changes, but if you click on that link, you can see recent changes to any page on your space. 
So here's all the changes I made to the home page, and here's the changes to the resource page, and the change to the space menu that we made when we edited navigation. Now the next link over here on the left is Manage Space, and there's some interesting stuff in there. You can actually list all the pages you've created. You can edit and delete them from there. You can list and upload files, which is great, just like uh, EduBlogs, if you tuned into my other presentation earlier this week. You can actually uh, upload Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint, uh, PDF, so forth, uh, images of various kinds into Wikispaces and share those as links. Great stuff. Uh, in fact, we can even go over that right now. To list and upload files, we click there, browse for a file. In this case, I'll grab that iPhoto agenda I grabbed the other day. And uh, then click send file. Just as easy as doing an attachment to an email again. And while it's uploading that file, it gives you uh, some syntax you can use here just with uh, double brackets on either side to include an image or a file in your uh, in one of your pages. Uh, I'll also show you how to do that in the editor. But basically, under Manage Space, Upload New File, uh, you can view and upload any files that uh, you need to upload to your site. Under usage statistics, you can also see page views and some other statistics about your site. This might become interesting to you as more and more people use and visit your site. Uh, and importing a blog entry might be interesting to you if you're blogging somewhere and you want that appear on your wiki. Now the space settings, I think, are perhaps the most interesting ones. Oh, let me not gloss too quickly over this. If you want to back up your space or export your space, you can do that as well. That's, even though it's a reliable service over at Wikispace, it's not a bad idea to back up your own space. Now, space settings. We can come into name description and license. There we can change the name if we want, add a description if we like. We can even change the license under which we're sharing this wiki. By default, it's shared under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license which means that uh, others can copy, distribute, display, and perform your copyrighted work, but only if they give you credit, uh, and that you allow others to distribute derivative works only under a license identical to the license that governs your work. If you like, you can also uh, limit derivative works and non-commercial use of your work. Uh, in addition, you've got the option of using the GNU free documentation license, if you like, or uh, no license. Okay, back to Manage Space. You can also manage members and permissions here. If you have your students uh, or other teachers at your site uh, make their own uh, Wikispaces accounts, you can then add them as members here, with either their Wikispaces username or their email. Uh, so for instance, if you're working with a grade level team or a uh, subject area team in a high school, uh, or any sort of uh, professional learning community, you can add everybody as a member to the page. Then they'll have uh, special privileges such as being able to create uh, new pages uh, within your wiki space and uh, being able to revert to pages and that sort of thing. Back to manage space. There are some subscription settings, but for the most part I presume you all are going to be using the free subscription. And you can, of course, request space deletion if you need that to happen. Uh, you can also invite people to uh, use your space. And you can uh, put space badges, such as the samples shown here, on your blog or other web space to link to your space. This badge is the one that you'll see on an edu blog by default, and it actually shows the uh, space menu. So you can click link through directly to resources from your other website. Okay, I seem to have skipped uh, look and feel, so I'm going to click on look and feel, because this is the place you might actually want to make the most changes. Uh, there's a couple of themes available, but they're not significant differences, so I'm going to skip that and go down into colors. Uh, I like to show this option. See how there's this gray color around the edge? You can make a really, really uh, clean looking wiki by coming here and picking the color for the background color, setting it to white, and uh, saving that setting. 
Now I've got this really clean wiki where it's all uh, just white uh, with the blue links and the black text. You could of course set the colors to whatever you like for text color and so on. Uh, if you upgrade your uh, account or your subscription here, you can actually use CSS to uh, customize your wiki style sheet. You can also customize your logo. Again, it's as easy as uh, adding an attachment to an email. Click on Browse. Uh, in this case, uh, I downloaded uh, Wiki logo from the Wikipedia. Just found it with a quick uh, Google search. The thing is, the logo has to be 150 by 150 pixels or less in order to uh, fit on wiki spaces. So I picked one that was uh, exactly that small, actually. If you save that, your new logo will now actually appear in the upper left-hand area of the page. Now, I don't know that I actually have permission to use this logo or not, but uh, shall serve for the demo. Okay, so we've gone over all of the other actions we can do uh, within a wiki space, and earlier we looked at all the tabs, such as edit, discussion, and history. Uh, there's only a few other options here for us. Uh, we can go up into settings, and we can actually input some information for our profile here, put in my real name, perhaps upload uh, another picture, change your time zone, uh, and some other options here. And of course, hit save. Notice uh, when I'm on settings here, or my account for that matter, uh, I have left the uh, particular space I was working on before, my wiki work space. And I'm just at www.wikispaces.com and dialed down into my user here. Now remember earlier I showed you I had all these spaces available. If I want to get back to my wiki workspace, I can come back down here and click on wiki work. Here's the wiki I created to support this presentation too, wiki while you work. Uh, of course I could always come in and type in the address up here, but I'm going to go ahead and go back to my demo. Here we are. Now before I uh, wrap up the hands-on section, I want to actually show you uh, some examples of educational wikis. Uh, one that Eva talked about is hmtech.wikispaces.com and here you'll see her page for uh, Houghton Mifflin Technology Resources. She's got lesson archives for kindergarten through fourth grade at this point. Again, as she said, kindergarten is most well populated because that's where she's done her work. You can cruise through, look at any particular theme, dial down, for instance, on uh, theme two, week two, and you can find links that uh, relate to phonemic awareness, high frequency words, comprehension skills, and oral language that they're working on, and so forth, uh, including centers with uh, games for kids that are relevant. So anybody who's using the Houghton Mifflin language series, particularly in California, can contribute to this simply by clicking edit this page. Another example she mentioned was her techtips.wikispaces.com, which is a similar sort of thing, uh, technology integration projects for kindergarten through third grade. We also talked to Dave Conley, who uh, runs the Aristotle experiment. Let's see if I can type that right, at wikispaces.com. There we go. See a picture of Estancia High School and at the bottom of the page. Oh, there we are. Picture of Dave and his wife, who also teaches English. There's some of Dave's students, which is a new addition, including something called uh, beatbox.mp4. You can check out the grammar and vocabulary projects he was talking about, or even the web projects he was talking about, including... Moby Dick Theater. And over here on the right, the group project pages. So feel free to explore that. Uh, I also don't want to quit without uh, sending you guys to a resource from a great uh, presentation I saw at NECC. Um, at ahistoryteacher.com slash NECC2006, you'll find Dan McDowell's uh, Choose Your Own Wiki Adventure Using Wikis with K-12 Students, and he's got lots of great examples here, uh, including a Holocaust Wiki project, 
uh, progression of events charts, AP World History using a wiki, uh, Industrial Revolution Project using a wiki, all kinds of great stuff and, and additional links. So Dan's work is a good resource. And there's tons more out there. Uh, start digging, start doing uh, some searches of your own for educational wikis. Uh, and if you have any questions, certainly uh, contact me or any of the organizers of uh, this conference. Well, that was sort of a whirlwind. But uh, hopefully you learned something. You can always replay it. You can always come back to it. Uh, and you can certainly always seek help online. Now, before we go, we do need to review uh, some of the benefits and some of the concerns uh, or drawbacks related to using these tools in the classroom. I'm going to do the anchor thing here. In fact, my sources tell me there are five major benefits to using wikis in education. First one is engagement and motivation. Our students are digital natives. They already enjoy using these technologies. They're interactive and responsive. They're certainly personalized. Everybody's making their own contributions to it. And uh, they appeal to multiple learning styles. They've had MP3 files and videos on the Aristotle experiment. Context is important. Students access, process, and create information that's meaningful to them. Uh, you saw how they have an authentic purpose and an authentic audience when they're writing on a wiki or sharing other media on a wiki. Uh, and again, it's all about content and communication, not the technology. This is transparent stuff here, folks. Even if you're, it's, there's a learning curve while you're starting. Um, it promotes inquiry. Again, Dave talked about it. Students discover, explore, and contribute to topics that they find interesting. Uh, they're solving authentic problems. Uh, again, it's individualized, and it's certainly more empowering than a textbook. Uh, Collaboration is important in these tools, uh, even more so than in a blog. Students connect with peers and experts this way. Uh, they can be experts this way. Uh, and again, experts can contribute to their work and vice versa. Your kids can contribute to Wikipedia. Uh, they, they certainly practice interpersonal skills as they work with each other, and they are definitely practicing with the tools of the 21st century workplace. Again, it's results-oriented stuff. They've got to have a product. Um, not as much as blogs, but wikis certainly do uh, encourage some reflection, the sort of planning and, and uh, seeing the histories and how these things grow encourages uh, metacognition, particularly if it's facilitated by a teacher like you. Uh, but unfortunately, there, there are still the concerns to consider, and, uh, and they're numerous. Uh, the first, of course, are the information literacy concerns, from the Wikipedia to the proliferation of other wikis on other topics, including the ones you and your students will make. Uh, relevance is an issue with this much information out there. Uh, the source. Students need to be able to identify or at least question what the source is and, and uh, sort out if there's any uh, agenda or bias behind it. They've got to be able to check their facts. Wikipedia, for example, is a great place to start research, but uh, your students need to be able to back up their facts somewhere else. Um, and, of course, identifying trusted sources is going to go a long way to making that easier. Unfortunately, when anyone can click edit and post whatever they want, inappropriate content is going to be an issue. Uh, we've got to protect our students against offensive, sexual, or violent content. We've got to show due diligence in this effort. Uh, and that may mean filtering from time to time, but uh, I hope it doesn't mean that we're blocking all wikis and all blogs everywhere. Um, ultimately, we've got to develop appropriate responses to the inevitable. Uh, and we've got to uh, teach our students that uh, they're going to... Uh, come across inappropriate material and, and that uh, turning the other way, quickly closing the window, letting the teacher know about it, uh, certainly not drawing attention of other kids to it is, is going to be ways to deal with it. Uh, of course now students too can post the very material we're trying to protect them from. Uh, they can post inappropriately, unsafely, irresponsibly, provocatively, and they can share illicit or illegal behavior online. So we, we want to steer them clear of that and have these conversations with them. Perhaps the most serious thing our students could post is threats. Uh, they could get into cyberbullying. Um, threats that impact attendance and academics are a school concern, according to California Ed Code, at any way. Uh, and, and credible threats may be a criminal matter. Of course, the flip side of this is free speech concerns. Students, at least in California, do have First Amendment rights, and parity is protected. 
We can't control the students, but we can educate them. Intellectual property is another issue. It's very easy for students to uh, cut and paste or post media that they don't have rights to, to post. Uh, and of course, academic honesty is related. We've got to talk to our students about that. Again, the history function on a wiki might help out, uh, as will the discussion functions. Um, and, and introduce your kids to alternative licenses, like the Creative Commons license that this, uh, this presentation is shared under, creativecommons.org. Fraud and identity theft are an issue even for kids. They can put their friends and family at risk, but they too can uh, lose their identity and lose passwords and, and usernames. Uh, but most importantly, stalkers and predators, perhaps not most importantly, but most seriously, most gravely, uh, stalkers and predators are a concern. Uh, we've always got to tell our students not to share uh, personal information, identifying information online. And, and again, if you're going to use wikis with your class, uh, I recommend sending home a, a cover letter and a permission slip that explicitly describes what you're doing and, and seeks parent permission to do that with the students. Uh, and of course, even so, we uh, always recommend using pseudonyms. Uh, another perspective here is uh, that all of this ability for anyone to exercise their voice online allows for citizen journalism, citizen police work. Uh, we're averting disasters and crimes all the time because of uh, things that are posted online. Uh, threats, suicide, and risky behavior are often reported. Um, sting operations actually do catch criminals. Um, ultimately, though, the biggest concern right now is that the lack of understanding that uh, a lot of people, including educators and legislators, have about these tools and, and uh, the backlash against them. Fortunately, I think you all have taken a big first step if you've listened to this whole presentation and gotten your feet wet with wikis. Um, Understanding these and using them yourself uh, is the first step towards uh, not being afraid of the tools. Okay, so that wasn't the most graceful edit in this presentation, but it's time to get this project up on the shelf and move on to something else. Once again, I'm thrilled that you were here with me for this presentation, thrilled to have this opportunity to present to the K-12 online conference. and. I do need to uh, acknowledge my indebtedness to bloggers and authors such as uh, David Warlick and Will Richardson, whose books I've read and whose blogs I've read for ages, and the other almost 400 people I'm subscribed to, because a lot of these ideas, of course, came from there. Uh, but at this point, I am going to say good night or good day or whatever happens time it happens to be there, and uh, as I said, put the project on the shelf and move on to something else. Hope to see you guys again soon. Please feel free to contact me anytime at mark at edtechlife.com. Is that right? Should I grab the electric and play it with distortion and reverb and really rock out? <laughs>